Okay, let's make this dough. First of all, very important point to keep in mind, we only use four ingredients. Water, yeast, salt and flour, no sugar at all, no fat is allowed in authentic Neapolitan pizza dough. This is stated in the disciplinare. Uh, so, water first of all, it must be drinkable, not sparkling. The temperature must be between 16 and 22 degrees. I will use this thermometer um, to just test the temperature and to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Well, it's going down. Slowly, let's say I am within the range. In traditional Neapolitan pizza making, we always start from the water, and this is what I will do. I will start with the water. There is no order specified in the disciplinare regarding the way I will need to add uh, the ingredients. Although I have seen many Neapolitan pizza makers uh, starting from water, then dissolving salt inside and proceeding, so on, I will do the opposite because the yeast will be a teeny tiny amount. Uh, not sure if you can even see it. Is, yes, it's a microscopic amount. It's 0 0.03 grams. And since it's a very small amount, you will need to become kind of a pizza geek, a bit like me, and using this kind of precision scale, because it's the only one that will allow to measure such a teeny amount of uh, yeast or salt, for that matter. Uh, speaking of which, I have already measured the salt as well. Uh, it's a little bit too much compared to what I usually do. Uh, this is going to be 4.47 grams of salt, uh, which is understandable because we will ferment our dough at room temperature and a little bit extra salt will slow things down and so we reduce, we decrease the risk of overproofing our dough. Now I have to dissolve the yeast. Now it's time to add some flour. The topic of the flour is a little bit more complex, I will strip it down to the most important element. First of all, we are allowed either double zero flour, or call it zero zero if you want, or zero flour. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I've got a video for you in the upper right corner, it should be here. Keep in mind that the amount of proteins of our flour is specified in the disciplinare and should be in between 11 and 13.5 percent which is exactly what i found here protein can you see here is 12.5 percent i don't particularly endorse this flower but i'm just following some uh, uh, traditions of our neapolitan masters it's time to add some flour just half of the total amount in order to get the thick mixture. So now I can add my salt. The disciplinary doesn't talk about hand kneading, so you can just do it your way. If you don't have your own way, or if you just want to uh, follow my instruction, I got another video about kneading I shared recently. I always leave a little bit of flour here for uh, later use, for example to clean up my hands or the spoon. Right now, I will just proceed. I don't want to give you exact timing here because, you know, uh, everyone is different, my hands is different than yours. So you just have to uh, continue until you see that the dough uh, is not that sticky anymore. I will also use a little bit of my leftover flour here to dust lightly my... Um, Table top and knead. If I see that the dough is becoming a little bit more too sticky, so my hands are getting dirty, I will just make good use of the extra flour here, which is included in the initial doses, so I'm not altering the balance of the recipe. Okay, I can easily tell that my dough is almost ready. Okay, a quick test. 
it's springing back. Now it's fermentation time. Uh, it's time for the first fermentation. Here the rules are way more flexible because the disciplinary says literally after the time deemed necessary for the dough to settle and rest, the double is formed. Now we deem when it's time, uh, we are free to decide. In my experience, I can tell you that anything between 20 and 30 minutes is usually considered enough. So I will wait 20 minutes, then check my double. Uh, just one in my case, but uh, it doesn't matter. If you are making more than one double, if your batch is big, just leave it here 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, around 25 minutes are passed. I can roll my double. The disciplinary gives us rules for the weight of the double as well. In particular, it gives us brackets. Uh, double must weight between 200 and 280 grams to make a pizza whose size is between 22 and 35 centimeters. My double here is around 240 grams, as I always do. Mm, all the pizzas you see on my social feeds are 240 grams doubles, so I'm perfectly in compliance because I am in between the uh, minimum and the maximum weight. Uh, I know my pizza will be stretched up to 31 centimeters. Now we can roll the double. As you can see, it's nice, silky, smooth, elastic. We can now leave our double alone for the second fermentation. It will stay here for around, I would say, 22 hours, more or less. The room temperature taken into account by the disciplinary is 23 degrees Celsius. Let's double check. Okay, I got 22.1 degrees here, so I'm perfectly fine with it. Now we can leave our double alone for the second fermentation. It will stay there for around 22 hours. The room temperature taken into account in the guidelines is 23 degrees Celsius. But this must be a flexible element for us. There's nothing we can do to change the room temperature. But luckily, we can change the temperature of the water and the flour. And this is very helpful because it gives us a method to achieve those 23 degrees Celsius as the final temperature of the dough is the rule of 55, as in 55 degrees Celsius. Basically, the sum of the room temperature, water temperature, plus flower temperature should be 55 expressed in degrees Celsius. Once you know the room temperature, you can easily control water and flour because you can stick them in the fridge. Typically, we only change the temperature of the water anyway. Of course, you need to be as geeky as I was here and get the thermometer. It's quite affordable anyway. So let's assume the room temperature is 20 degrees. The flour temperature is 20 degrees. The remaining 15 degrees should be the temperature of the water. Okay, so tomorrow I will stretch and bake this double. I will make a simple margarita with tomato sauce and mozzarella. Don't ask me about basil because I don't like it. I won't dive into details about tomato sauce because the video will be too lengthy. Besides, I got uh, a video with the exact recipe mentioned by the disciplinare. <laughs> now baking will be the tricky part because of the limitation I mentioned. Before I continue, please consider that it takes a long time to make videos like this. So if you are enjoying what you're watching, a thumbs up will be appreciated. It's free. And if you want to support me, get my book or my t-shirt. The baking part is the hardest because the disciplinare dictates scorching temperatures in order to bake extremely quickly. It's simply impossible to get them in our regular kitchen oven. Uh, besides, it's supposed to be a wood fire oven, although exceptions are expressly allowed in certain cases. Let's make do with what we have, but if your oven cannot reach 250 degrees Celsius at the very least, I'd say that the result would be... And by the way, you can still try my other dough, which is great for lower temperatures. So how do we proceed? First of all, turn on the oven to its highest temperature, whatever it is. Mine is 270 degrees. If your oven is more powerful, it's even better. Crank it up. We need to preheat the oven long enough. As a rule of thumb, 
Just wait for the leader control light on the front panel to go off, then wait another 10 minutes. If you need help, check out my video on this topic. If you have a baking stone or a baking steel, leave it inside the oven while you preheat. If you don't have any, use your dripping pan, the one that came with your oven. Whatever you have, place it in the uppermost shelf. Mine is around 6 cm from the upper grill or broiler. Speaking of which, if you have it, turn it on as well. Let's bake this pizza and see what happens. The double is ready around 22-23 hours later. We can finally stretch uh, our double, which is nice and puffy, as you can see. We can stretch it on a layer or of flour or semolina, both are allowed. Now the disciplinary gives us some guidelines on how to stretch this double. We should do it with the movement from the center outwards and with the pressure of the finger, so both ends on the double which is turned over several times. You probably know that there is this Neapolitan slap technique, but uh, there is no mention in the disciplinare, so I assume we are not really forced to use it. Um, I mean, uh, stretch it your way, do your best. If you uh, want any help, you know uh, I got videos for that as well. I will cover it with uh, semolina on top. So, from the center outwards, and of course, we need to leave the infamous cornicione. Basically, we are pushing the air from the center outwards. Then we flip it. We do the same thing here. And as you can see, uh, it's becoming puffy. We can turn it over several times. We are allowed to do it. And as you can see, the more we do it, the bigger the pizza uh, becomes. Let's remove the excess flour and work on our table. This is probably not the full size. We will stretch a little bit more our, our base when we are ready to put it in the oven. I got a, uh, a pizza paddle. If you don't have it, you can just uh, use a, a cardboard, for example, maybe a, a chopping board, whatever you have. In that case, I recommend cover it with a sheet of parchment paper, so it will be easier to slide the pizza inside the oven. If you're not too confident in using your paddle or peel, you can still use your uh, parchment paper on top of the paddle. And actually, this is what I will do. And I'm now ready to top my pizza. Tomato sauce first, it should be 60 to 80 grams, depending on, on the size of the pizza, of course. And mozzarella. This is actually fior di latte. We also need six to eight grams of extra virgin olive oil. We draw a number six on top of our pizza. Make your pizza as big as you want, even if it goes a little bit um, outside of the, of the paddle itself, it's not gonna be a big deal just because of the parchment paper. In the oven now, there we go, look at this beautiful pizza, Napoletana in and home oven. You know what, let's check the size, around 30 centimeters, uh, so I am perfectly within the rules. The cornicione must be 1 to 2 centimeters, 2 and a half, a little bit more, regular. Every crumb, no bubbles, no burns, and golden in color. So there's no mention of those leopard spots, which are essential according to many people. Yeah, pity you can't try it because it's pretty good.